so imagine this is your smooth muscle right this is your smooth muscle that is around the sinusoids of corpora cavernosa Right. Uh, surrounding the smooth muscles, there will be endothelium, right? Endothelium of the blood vessels. Now, these endothelium of the blood vessels, these are basically generators of a compound which we refer to as, or which we have already studied in our autonomic nervous system, which is called endothelium derived relaxing factor, which is nothing but your nitric oxide. All right. This nitric oxide is formed. when arginine combines with an enzyme which is called nitric oxide synthetase and forms nitric oxide or endothelium derived relaxing factor now uh, and uh, this nitric oxide can also be uh, produced from the nerve terminals that are present in the adventitia and they also uh, release nitric oxide so these also release nitric oxide all right and this nitric oxide enters the smooth muscle so this endothelium is uh, releasing nitric oxide and also the nerve terminals that are present in the adventitia of the sinusoids of the corpora cavernosa they are also releasing the uh, nitric oxide now there are certain drugs that we have that will be uh, that uh, you have already come across in your cvs section and those are your glyceryl trinitrate they also release nitric oxide and then we have got isosorboid uh, dinitrate that also releases nitric oxide and then we have got isosorboid mononitrate isosorboid mononitrate that also releases uh, nitric oxide and the last drug that we have come across in your in our cardiovascular section is nitroprusside so now you know three basic uh, uh, instances where nitric oxide is released into the body primarily it is released from the endothelium that is surrounding the uh, muscle tissue smooth muscle tissue and then they are also released from the nerve terminals that are present in the adventitia of the corpora cavernosa of the penile tissue now in this specific smooth muscle there is a compound which is called as guanylyl cyclase all right this guanylyl cyclase is a tiny little human being that is present in your smooth muscle all right and its name is guanylyl cyclase it's wearing a cap now this guanylyl cyclase basically has got uh, a point of attachment for nitric oxide so we are going to draw this point of attachment all right now nitric oxide will draw it in black and uh, nitric oxide when it is released by the endothelium and the uh, nerve terminals in the present in the ad adventitia it goes and binds to the guanylyl cyclase now when that happens guanylyl cyclase will convert gtp gtp into cgtp into GMP. cyclic gmp all right so cyclic gmp is a very active uh, molecule or a very active chemical that is formed when guanylyl cyclase converts gtp into cyclic gmp all right so we'll put this in a box this is a very important molecule now this cyclic amp in turn what it does is it causes the formation of a, a very important enzyme which is called a kinase all right this kinase basically uh so you know what are kinases basically kinases are from your biochemist you know that kinases are the group of enzymes that like to bombard any tissue or any effector cell or any in chemical or a, or any receptor with energy all right so this particular kinase is named as protein kinase and since we have g over here it will be protein kinase g all right this protein kinase g what will, what it does is it causes it bombards or it throws phosphate bombs on a compound which is called myosin 
light chain kinase so you know from the name itself indicates that you know it is involved in contraction and relaxation of a smooth muscle since it is since it has it has got light chain kinases all right uh, myosin light chain kinase you know that actin and myosin are involved in your uh, uh, are uh, involved with muscle contraction and relaxation so what this uh, protein kinase g does is it throws phosphate bonds on the myosin light chain kinase and you know that energy is needed both to switch on a system and to switch off a system so in this case protein kinase g it switch off switch off the myosin light chain kinase so when there is switching of the myosin uh, myosin light chain kinase what happens is the next events that happen is there will be reduced contractility of the muscle all right and when there is reduced contractility of muscle uh, what happens will the will the muscle relax or uh, will the muscle contract the muscles go into relax mode the muscles go into relax mode and the and when the muscles are uh, going into relax mode what happens is the surrounding sinusoids are filled up with blood all right there will be ample amount of blood flow that is coming when the muscles go into a relaxation mode and when the uh, sinusoids of corpora cavernosa are are uh, filled with blood what happens is you get a penile erection so that is basically your physiology of penile erection so what happens is let us quickly review that we have got uh, nitric oxide that is coming from the endothelium of the uh, smooth muscles surrounding the surrounding the smooth muscles Uh, from the blood vessels surrounding the smooth muscles, and then uh, when uh, nitric oxide enters, it attaches itself to coronal cyclase that causes that converts uh, GTP into cyclic GMP. This cyclic GMP is very important because it converts or it activates or increases the levels of protein kinase G. This protein kinase G bombards myosin light chain kinase with phosphate bonds to switch it off, and when it switches it uh, switches it off. what happens is there is reduced contractility of the muscle and when there is reduced contractility of the muscle the muscles go into a relax mode and then when the muscles relax what happens is the sinusoids are filled with blood and when they are filled with blood that will cause penile erection so this is basically uh, the physiology of penile erection so what happens in some individuals is uh, there is something called erectile dysfunction the uh, penile erection doesn't take place properly so we have come across we have come up with certain drugs that helps in the treatment of erectile dysfunction this erectile dysfunction could be because of less amounts of nitric oxide it could be because of some mental stress it could be because of some uh, physical uh, abnormality that the patient might have you know all there are many factors that cause erectile dysfunction so for the treatment of erectile dysfunction uh what we do is we give a drug which is called sildenafil or in layman terms under the brand name it is it is uh marketed under the brand name viagra you might have come across this so basically viagra is nothing but your sildenafil so what sildenafil does is before we talk about what sildenafil does uh we'll uh, we'll talk about something else this cyclic gmp now after the penile erection is done this cyclic gmp what it does is it is destroyed by an enzyme which is called pde5 phosphodiesterase in uh, phosphodiesterase five all right so this uh, cyclic gmp is acted upon by phosphodiesterase five and converted into a normal compound which is called gmp this for cyclic gmp is acted upon by uh, phosphodiesterase five and converted into cyclic gmp so when this Uh, this physiological reaction occurs uh, the penile erection that was uh, now uh, caused it will be removed all right so what sildenafil does is it causes what sildenafil does is it causes the inhibition of phospho it causes the inhibition of phosphodiesterase 5 so you can refer sildenafil to be as a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor so 
when uh, when there is when we have taken a drug called sildenafil which is a phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitor what it does is it will stop this process from happening that means the cyclic gmp levels will continue to rise in the smoke body and that cyclic gmp will initiate protein kinase g and protein kinase g will switch off the myosin light chain kinase so that the erectile dysfunction which was happening in the individual will not be there so there will have a continued or a prolonged uh, penile erection all right so that is how uh, sildenafil which is also termed as viagra works it is basically a pde5 inhibitor that inhibits the conversion of cyclic gmp to gmp and that is the reason why i told that cyclic gmp is a vital player in this physiological process so how much of it, how much of sildenafil are you supposed to take uh sildenafil basically uh, you are supposed to take in a dose of 25 to 50 mg right so it is indicated 25 to 50 mg of sildenafil are required is required for the treatment of erectile dysfunction in men due to organic or psychogenic causes adverse effects of sildenafil includes a uh, headache nasal congestion flushing and mild decrease in pp so that is one of the side effects of uh sildenafil the other drugs that we have apart from sildenafil for the treatment of erectile dysfunction are uh, you have got uh, intracavernosal injection therapy intracavernosal injection therapy cavernosal injection therapy and in this what we do is we give injection directly into the cavernosa of the patient of the penile tissue all right and then we again have a drug which is a pge1 analog and it is called alprostadol all right it is not that important so and then we have got other drugs uh, like your herbal agents that we have all right and then uh, we also have lastly uh, transcutaneous application therapy so but primarily what you have to remember with respect to the drug treatment of erectile dysfunction is the uh, physiology of penile erection and uh, the treatment of erectile dysfunction with the use of sildenafil in a dose of 25 to 50 mg which is basically a pde5 inhibitor now this concludes our uh, chapter on drug treatment of erectile dysfunction